Hi, my name is Dominic Gay, and I'm senior producer on Watch Dogs, and you're watching Eurogamer. What's up my friends, I'm Ian from Eurogamer and I like Watch Dogs a lot. I got a 15 minute hands on with the game at this year's Gamescom and it came in just behind Titanfall for my game of show. After my hands on I got to speak to Dominic Gay, senior producer on Watch Dogs about my experiences. Now during a demo I had to hack into a CTOS control centre and while the chap demoing urged me to attempt the mission stealthily I decided against it, jumped in a car, smashed my way through the main gate and shot everyone in the face. Blammo, job done. I loved having that choice to go crazy, that open world sandbox approach to the mission is my favourite type of gameplay, but there are other less psychotic ways to do these missions, aren't there Dominic? There it is, the access code to the server room. So there's three core styles that we, we observe and we're trying to support as, as well as we can. The first one is the, uh, well, the violent guy, the guy who uses uh, vehicles, explosives and guns to try and get his way. Uh, and that's fine. We support that and we'll always allow the player, and I think most players do in playtests, to mix it up with hacking. Use hacking even in those contexts to create cover for yourself or denying for, to, to, other, uh, to the AIs. There's also gamers, and there's a lot of those, who wants to approach things in a stealthy or sneaky way. And that is something that was important for us. There's a lot of guys on the team who want to play that way, who doesn't, don't want to be violent all the time. And also, I think it suits very well with the, with the hacker philosophy of you know, getting in, getting out, no one saw you. Uh, so that's definitely something we support. And the third role is the hacker, the, the guy who wants to really abuse the way you can go through systems. Uh, and a lot of our challenges you can, you can approach purely from that perspective. But most players will mix up those player style depending on well, how things go uh, with their initial plan of action. Part of the actual mission included a hacking section where Aiden had to jump from security camera to security camera to find his hacking objective. It was almost like a little mini game. Can you talk a bit about why you chose this gameplay element? Our core initial idea was, you know, there's CCTVs throughout Chicago and as a hacker you're going to be able to hack into those. One of the ideas that we had is a nice way to, to go across the system, kind of project yourself from camera to camera is from a uh, an eye, and from when you see it from your from from your ca a camera from a camera, you're able to jump from a camera to another, and so that way you can project yourself very far from your current position, and always from a camera you can hack. So you're able to infiltrate a facility only going from camera to cameras, and eventually hacking into computer system, maybe giving you accesses, or even that's what you were there for. You steal information, never had to set foot within the facility. So that's one very specific way of approaching problems uh, and a, a way very specific to watch us. Later on, while I was having a leisurely stroll around Chicago, I may or may not have caused a massive car crash. Alright, I did. But what I thought was really cool was how all the NPCs in close proximity to the crash started pulling out their mobile phones and filming the carnage. It really added a layer of believability to the world and made it all feel much more real. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, a city, it's very dynamic. A lot of things should and can happen. And sometimes it's funny because even when we have a bug <laughs> in the game, it emerged, it emerged into gameplay or it emerged into new circumstances we hadn't necessarily figured out. I remember the first time we had a bug where a guy would start running for no reason. Well, the, f the person who saw it the first time said, oh, well, oh, that's cool. Someone had the behavior of someone who was in a hurry. I said, no, that's a bug. And then we, we, we made sure that bug kept on happening. It was actually a feature. And that's the way we started building the dynamism of the city. Um, so yeah, one of the things we wanted is for our citizens to be modern. And for example, you know, using your phone and take pictures and recording what's happening around you is a part of how people react in a modern city when they see drama or something very interesting that they can, uh, they can look at. Um, and so that also ties them up with the cops and with the media, which are two other very important factions in our city and the dynamism of our city. So people can report crimes to cops. Cops will try using the CCTV to analyze what's going on. You can hack into the CCTV, try and remain uh, hidden if you're the guy who causes the problem in the first place. So it creates interesting loots for the player to try and exploit. 
Another standout point during the game was when Aiden Pierce started being hacked by an NPC. I had to hunt him down and kill him before he could complete his hack. It was only after I'd completed the objective though that I was told it was a real life player doing the hacking and not an NPC. It was a very cool little touch allowing someone to infiltrate my game like that and it's really a very different online experience to one I'd ever encountered before. One way we wanted to create online and multiplayer in our game was to mix people single player experience together. Um, basically we're used to play multiplayer going through a lobby and then saying I want to play a death match or what or whatnot and then you get matchmake and you wait and then the game starts. Three, two, one, it starts. Instead in Watch Dogs what we, what we have is people can jump into your game when you're not in main mission. So they can do that if you're in the middle of you know a very important narrative moment. But between missions and there's a lot of exploration in our city um, then they can come into your game, you don't know they're there, and they, and they have their own missions, their own objective. From their perspective, they're inside their city also. They've just been giving a contract to go and tail another player and hack into him. So what you experiment is someone got a contract to hack into you, came into your game, hacked you, but you're always able to go back and retaliate against someone who did that. And the reason to do that is you're going to start putting virus in other players and building your own network of botnets, for lack of a better word. So people you put virus into, you'll see your network of them, and you're going to have bragging rights. And you're kind of you're not taking any away from them, anything from them, but you are gaining, gaining notoriety. You're gaining power from the fact that you have put virus into their devices. And there's a meta game to that happening in Watch Dogs. So if I hack into someone else's game, they're not going to see another Aiden Pierce, are they? I'm, I'm going to look like an AI to them, right? They're, they're going to see you as another citizen, any, any, any other citizen. So you're able to be sneaky and kind of use that to your advantage, try to act like an AI. And that's one way of doing it. There's various ways, uh, but definitely that's the way people like to do it. Obviously there will be a main narrative to the game, but I was surprised to find out that what I played at Gamescom was only side missions, because they really seem quite extensive. Can you talk about why you've put so much detail into your side missions? Side missions are a big deal for us. Actually we wanted to put a lot of effort into them, almost sometimes as much as we put in, in single player missions. And the way we pull that off is we have uh, studios working with us. For example, there's a Newcastle studio and they have putting a lot of effort into building some of those side missions. Uh, so there's various factions within the city and they can offer you contracts. So that's one type of side missions and there's a lot of variety in those kinds of gameplay. But also as a hacker, while well, you can know what's happening behind closed doors, you learn about a lot of things going on. You know that someone's planning a crime or you know that a faction somewhere is doing something really fishy. So if you want, you can go and you start investigating into those narrative threads happening in the city and that can open up uh, mission, mission chains that will lead to very important events if you go down that path. But those are all optionals. It's up to the player to decide if he wants to do it. If he does it, there's a lot of rewards to get. Some are narrative, but some will make you a stronger hacker and help you out in your main quests. There's still going to be basic side missions like races and things like that going on though, right? We have races, we have multiplayer races. Uh, we have a lot of missions which are uh, going to challenge you on driving that are side missions. Uh, some are going to challenge you on more stealth, some are going to challenge you more on the uh, shooting side or aggressive side. But most of our side missions can be approached with a lot of freedom also, just like the, the core mission, the main missions. And actually one of the things that you played in the demo, the control center that you hacked into and put a virus, we consider that as a side objective because it's not something we're necessarily forcing the player to do through the game. He can go and he can put uh, back doors and various facilities in the city to extend his ability to hack uh, within the game world. Watch Dogs will be releasing on current and next gen consoles. What kind of things did you need to scale back on for the current gen releases? Do we get less missions or is it more of a graphical difference? We always made sure that our game was running on both you know, PS3, 360, uh, PC and then when, they, when we had the hardware on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And the, uh, the Wii U is also being worked on in Bucharest. Uh, and obviously what we're doing is we're pushing a lot farther on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One because we're using that, you know, that hardware's full potential for launch. So we're, we're able to push immersion. The, the easy thing to imagine is graphics. Obviously the graphics is going to be scaled accordingly to the platform. But it's more than graphics. Uh, immersion is also what I like to call the dynamism of the city. So the amount of people in the street, the amount of cars and the traffic and 
uh, the fidelity of the AI of those various things. Those are things that we're scaling across platform. But the one thing that we want to make sure is that the core experience, so story, mission, the city, the world, the design, everything is the same across all the platforms. That's the important part for us. Thanks, Dominic. My hands-on with Watch Dogs really did get me pumped for the game, and I can't wait to get my hands on the full version. I think for me, though, I'll be buying it on next-gen rather than current-gen, just so I can get the full effect of the living, breathing Cyber Chicago that Ubisoft have created. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more Watch Dogs coverage coming soon, along with all the usual exclusives and live streams of all the biggest and best new games here on Eurogamer. Now is the time to wake up.